Um, you can you can go to Shamoon's Facebook page, and there's all sorts of stuff there. Uh, and it's, you know, um, but basically he was promoting David Allen's stuff and saying, ah, Allen's just blown all this ice and Jesus. Just, just read through the past two weeks worth of stuff and, and mark how many shots, just straight shots. I mean, unnecessary uh, stir up the waters, chum to to the to the people uh, who want to you know um, follow you and get all angry and and stuff like that. Uh, just just nasty stuff that unfortunately uh, Sam knows better. I know that he knows better. He has said that he knows better, but he can't stop it. He just he just can't stop it. Um, and so I said. You know, he was he was saying uh, he'll never debate me. He would never. I would destroy him. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, uh, since that was specifically about Romans eight. All right, let's debate Romans eight thirty one through thirty four. See what he's doing. He's so deceptive. He's so dishonest. He's so predictable. He, I never said anything about that. We're supposed to debate limited atonement. Okay, so we can broaden the subject out. We can do limited atonement. Um, well, that means we're going to have to look at my passages. It's, it's like, no, well, if we'll do limited atonement. If you want to bring up Colossians 1, bring up Colossians 1. I'm going to bring up Romans 8. It's one of the clearest statements on the, on the text. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll debate that. And, and how about let's, let's also debate your, your textual critical position that you, um, I, I, don't, I don't know that Sam really understands that position, but here's the problem. He can't hold the position that he's quoting because he's now become rapidly anti-reformed, and it's a reformed position. You, you've, if you're sitting on a tree limb, you just cut the limb off because the guys that you are using to support this perspective are all reformed, and their being reformed is central to their reasoning. So if you say that, for example... The reformed understanding of Romans nine is pure eisegesis, and I'm a, I'm I'm foolish, and you'll just destroy me. Sam loves to destroy everybody. Um, you'll just destroy me. Um, that's the argument of the people you've been promoting. So, are you going to come up with some some other argument? Um, I don't know. We're going to need to have some very firm ground rules and positions laid out uh, to be able to uh, to make this work. But I think it's an important topic, and I'm willing to endure what I'm going to have to endure, and I know what I'm going to have to endure, uh, to to make this happen. Um, but one of the reasons I wanted to do this is um, on September 13th, so six days ago, Sam posted this. I'm looking at his, his Facebook page right now. And here's, here's the real issue. It, it's one thing for him to... Um, just attack me for you know on everything i don't i don't know why i i thought that was dealt with guess i was wrong um but it's it's this kind of stuff that i think needs needs to be called out and it needs to be dealt with uh by everybody by everybody and so on september 13th Sam posted an article. I'm just going to read you um, what it says here. It's a link to his blog where he's written an article. Um, and it, the article starts off because it's you can see part of it in the link. This series initially was intended to, to be a reply to another Muslim neophyte in order to expose his blatant inconsistencies and selective use of sources. That's how it starts. But here's his description. Finally, after all these years, I have published the first part in a series of refutation to an article posted on the site of Mohammedan polemicist and a member of the sewage of Islam, Basam Zawadi, who tried to argue that Luke did not hold the vicarious sacrificial death of the Lord Jesus. Then he gives the link. 
Lord willing, once my series is done, he will have wished that he never posted his sham piece, but rather have spent that time smothering the black stone as his pagan prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T, used to do. So here, this is how you introduce an article you've written specifically to defend, quote, the vicarious sacrificial death of the Lord Jesus, end quote. The danger of apologetics, especially when it is disconnected from ministry in the church, and for the vast majority of apologists, it is. And as far as I know with Sam, it always has been. He, I do not believe he has any type of consistent, in-depth uh, teaching ministry within a sound local church. And I've asked about that many times, and I've always gotten very vague responses. Uh, but there is no balance there. And the great danger to anyone in apologetics is that this kind of attitude can be fostered and not challenged and not corrected. Let's say that Sam does a wonderful job in marshalling arguments and facts and resources to refute Bassam Zawadi on the subject of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, and the issue of atonement, basically. Let's say that it's masterfully argued and that it's in-depth, and that it, res it responds to every argument that Bassam put forward. When you introduce your defense of the gospel by throwing battery acid in the face of the person to whom you are offering it, what does that say about your actual motivations? What does that say? Um, so, a Mohammedan polemicist and a member of the sewage of Islam. So we ask ourselves an honest question. Why has this article been written? What's the motivation that has been revealed by the words that reveal the heart? And then that second paragraph, Lord, will, Lord willing, Lord willing, Lord willing. I wouldn't want to be responsible for that one. Once my series is done, he will have wished that he never posted his sham piece, but rather have spent that time smothering the black stone as his pagan prophet used to do. Lord willing. Um, it is transparent. It is unquestionable that the motivations revealed by the words, the words reveal the heart. The words reveal the heart. Now, the subject that Basam Zawadi has brought up is an important subject. And I am thankful that by God's grace, not because of any good in me, that there's more than one Muslim who would be willing to dialogue with me on this subject because there's a major difference. They understand that I actually seek to be consistent in my profession of faith and care for them. It's sort of a, a necessary thing. You, if, if you destroy 
the essence of what you're trying to say to someone, if you reveal that you have no concern for them, you have nothing but disrespect for them, you detest them as individuals, you don't care if they ever repent. You're just going to blast away and 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 wi and he's going to wish that he never posted his sham piece, but rather spent that time smothering the black stone of his pagan prophet. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's how to really, you know, um, add to the impact of your uh, your presentation. No, what it does is it it tells Basam and every other Muslim here believe in Jesus. He loves you. I don't, but he does. There you go. Um. Just shouldn't be. It just shouldn't be. And making the excuse that, well, it's just his background or whatever else it is, I, doesn't work. Shouldn't have ever done it. But there it is. Um, now, if you'd like to see how that kind of debate can take place, uh, Basam and I did a debate number of years ago uh, in London and have talked to one another about the possibility of doing it again. And that would be an excellent subject, atonement in Islam and Christianity. And how many Muslims do you think might be tempted to listen to that while not tempted at all to read what Sam says here? All because of a simple matter of restraint, consistency, controlling of one's anger. Yeah, well, there you go.